In this series, we focus heavily on the important historical innovations crucial to rebuilding society. But in the event of an actual societary collapse, I'm sure we'd all have that one modern convenience we'd really miss. In today's video, we explore one such convenience, an ice cold bottle of cola, and see if we can create one using Stone Age technology. What we eat today comes from generations of trial and error, accidental discovery, and ever-expanding trade We're exploring the origins and the history of some of our favorite foods of today, as well as the tools were invented along the way to make them. My name is Andy, and this is How To Make Everything. This video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. If you haven't heard of Raid Shadow Legends yet, it's a mobile turn-based MMORPG. It's pretty fun to play, so you better check it out. Use my link below to download Raid yourself to your mobile phone or PC. There's really never been a better time to start playing. Raid has 16 different factions, such as Banner Lords, High Elves, Undead Hordes, and many more. Each faction has over 30 champions you can add to your vault and take into battle. My favorite faction currently is Barbarians. It might take a little inspiration from some of their weapons. Also, this game is laid out really well with a lot of different things to do. One of my favorite features is that there are a lot of different battle options from campaigns to faction wars and even battle in the arena. And last month, Raid just released the biggest update yet. The main event here is the Doom Tower. It's a giant tower with 120 floors, a bunch of secret challenge rooms, and 12 seriously tough bosses to take on. Gameplay is easy and fun. If you want to have a AI run the battle for you, you can select the autoplay function and speed it to double time, or switch to manual and choose the attacks yourself. If you want to get a huge head start in raid, all you have to do is hit the link in the description. If you are a new player, you'll get a free champion bulwark, 50 gems, an XP booster, some energy refills, and even an ancient shard as soon as you get in-game. All this treasure will be waiting for you here, but do it soon because these rewards will only be available for the next 30 days. This video is partially inspired by a TV show that has been mentioned a few, pff, it's gotta be several thousand times by now. The anime Dr. Stone. So I just checked, it's been commented and mentioned 2,071 times. True hipster credit goes to Prince Vegeta for commenting very first, as far as I can tell, three years ago, not long after the very first manga Dr. Stone was published. This series is one I was not aware of before I began the reset, and only finally checked out at the end of the year. Finally watching it, I can see why the comparison has been made. Both of us follow a very similar concept of exploring the process that built the modern world that we rarely think about today. In Dr. Stone, it's something, there's like the space ray that turns everyone to stone, and that can only be reversed by the magical healing power of bat poop after several thousand years have passed. And there's this like high school student with horrible social skills and obsession with large numbers. I figured it out by counting. <laughs> He just happens to know everything and he tries to reinvent the modern world. But then there's also this like jock guy and he's the bad guy and he only wants to revive people that deserve it with the bad poop. And he's like strong and stuff, so they're against each other and the main character has to feed him with the use of science. So he invents ramen and the katanas and they square up. Also there's some like astronauts and stuff. In the end, the series explores the same question I ultimately ask. All the stuff we buy, like, how? How do we make all this? How do we figure all of this out? The modern world and how all these items we use and take for granted every day and our detachment from that process has been an area of intrigue that's been expressed beyond just myself, but other YouTubers and authors, and now apparently in anime as well. The Dr. Stone series has the advantage of being fiction and doesn't have the actual challenge of executing the things they propose in real life, which gives weird things like when they make iron, it's cast into wood molds. Knowing the theory behind something and actually getting it to work is something I've learned to be very different. Something I've learned again and again the hard way. But it's really interesting to see the overlap in their fictional endeavors and my real world attempts at executing similar themes. So in this video, I wanna try and explore one of the more achievable things that they make and produce a bottle of cola. At this point, I'd say to go check out the new season on a specific streaming service, but since they declined to sponsor, I'm just gonna end this with uh, no specific recommendation at all. Let's go make some cola. We say cola as a generic term, but really they're all replicating the originator, Coca-Cola, named after its original two ingredients, coca leaves from South America and cola nuts from Africa. A recipe is gonna involve neither of these, just like the secret modern day recipe of Coke. Coca-Cola was invented in 1886 as an alternative to alcohol, in its place containing the harmless substances of caffeine and cocaine. A pipe dream of mine since I started this series has been to make my own very original recipe of Coca-Cola harvested from the cocaine fresh from South America. But uh, I still don't have the money or legal resources to actually execute that, but hopefully someday. Since its origin, the Coke brand has gone through numerous adjustments in the recipe and flavor, and numerous competitors have arisen to replicate their taste. Sadly, the cocaine got cut in 1903, and in 1912, Coke was sued to try and remove the caffeine as well. 
Unfortunately, they won, and we can continue to mainline the most widely used psychoactive substance in the world. One of Coke's defining attributes, besides the cocaine, was its carbonation. Naturally, carbonated water from volcanic springs has been widely believed to have medicinal effects, but then so did cocaine at the time. Artificially carbonated water was discovered in the 1700s, with one early method being to just pour water back and forth over a vat of fermenting beer. Carbonated water is water with carbon dioxide dissolved into it, forming carbonic acid in the water. Processes that involve yeast fermentation are naturally carbonated by the yeast production of CO2, but if it's not contained, the CO2 will escape or effervesce. In our attempt, we're going to follow a method and recipe described in Dr. Stone to recreate a cola, as well as some alternative recipes using a handful of ingredients we've been able to collect in the past. These include a variety of citrus fruits, cilantro I grew in my indoor garden, honey we collected straight from the hive, Some maple syrup I tapped straight from the tree. Cinnamon bark I harvested in Mexico. And yeast we previously cultivated for making bread. One of the key things for a soda is the bubbles. Carbonation is a pretty important aspect of the actual soda. Try a few different ways to actually replicate that as best as possible using our more primitive technologies we have here. In the past we've done this just by fermenting and things like beer that are fermented with yeast. We're kind of naturally carbonated, but at this point we weren't really able to contain it so that yielded kind of a, a little bit more of a flatter beer and other beverages. So in the anime Dr. Stone, they kind of build this weird apparatus to try and produce their own carbonated water. I still have absolutely no idea what this thing is. You got a vat where you have stuff fermenting, which produces carbon dioxide, and then you have a tube, likely made out of leather, that leads to this kind of apparatus that spins. Inside of it is a bamboo tube that has a bunch of vents for the carbon dioxide produced by the yeast to get kind of pushed out and into the water. And the whole thing is set up to spin around it, agitate the water, so it absorbs as much of the carbon dioxide as possible. There's gonna be some pretty questionable engineering things with that. A sealed container that can spin around an axis is pretty complicated. The disadvantage to that method is that there's no real pressure being built into it, which is kind of how most things are carbonated today. They can also try probably the more traditional method, which is basically put some yeast straight in your drink beverage and let it carbonate in there and seal it. So that it traps it in there. We'll make do with ceramics and see how well it works. Sealed. First, we're gonna use the ceramic fermenting jar we previously made for making moonshine. But this time with a new lid with a nozzle to connect the hose to. Next, leather hose, which will need a new tool to help work and all. Sew together the leather into a tube with some wax thread. One stitch. Then coated it with a sealant made out of olive oil and beeswax. Then to make the bamboo vent tube by stabbing it with a hot piece of iron. For the large outer cylinder that holds water, we haven't had access to that large of a bamboo before, so I'll, I'll try to make one out of clay. Carefully laying it all out to the exact dimensions, carefully assemble it, and start all over again. Then 
then build a big fire and pit fire it, hoping it doesn't shatter. Now to put it all together. Rather than trying to somehow make two watertight bearings along the cylinder, I sealed the joint completely using some leather scraps and the waterproof caveman glue that's made out of pine resin, beeswax, and charcoal. To prevent the holes from getting twisted up then, I attached it to a smaller piece of bamboo that fits inside the vent tube, allowing it to rotate there. This won't be gas tight, so some of the produced CO2 may be lost here, especially besides the likely leaks in the leather tubing and pretty much everywhere else. <laughs> Maybe it actually worked. Oh, I'm <laughs> Unfortunately, as we filmed in January, most waterfalls in the area have actually frozen up. So we had to make do with an artificial one to at least prove that it would spin underwater. Unfortunately, when it came to actually filling the canister, I started to run into some issues. Getting all the components fully watertight, much less airtight, was pretty much impossible. And when I resorted to shooting it directly into the canister with a hose, the ceramics failed. So I was pretty skeptical of this device working just because of the engineering challenges of all these primitive materials. So let's at least try removing that variable and try something simpler with modern airtight materials to see how much carbonation we can achieve that way. Lastly, there's the sealed ceramic bottle that potentially could hold a lot more pressure and maybe get a better result. Bubbly, we got bubbles. So both the results were actually pretty similar at around a pH of five, which is actually comparable to a lot of carbonated beverages. Taste wise, it was noticeably flatter than most sodas, but definitely more carbonated than regular water. The similar bottle method yielded a lot of extra yeast flavor, but this suggests that the very complex spinning aspect of the Dr. Stone design probably wasn't even necessary. Meanwhile, while I tried to put bubbles into water, Lauren was working on the cola flavoring syrup. <laughs> We're going to try both the recipe from Dr. Stone. Mecca Sinku here to spit some facts. Carbonated water, cilantro, lime, and honey caramel are all the ingredients you need to make cola, if you can believe it. And also a natural recipe we found online that's been adapted to some of the ingredients we've previously collected. So while this drink is named after the coca leaf and the cola nut, its flavor isn't really from either. They're just for the medicinal caffeine and cocaine. And instead, it's a secret formula likely contains some combination of citrus oils, cilantro, and cinnamon. So Lauren prepped the ingredients. <laughs> That's actually cool. <laughs> Alright, so we're gonna put the sticks. First, the all-natural recipe, using maple syrup combined with zested citrus fruits, crushed cilantro seeds, also known as coriander, and cinnamon. Then we also added the juice from all the fruits as well. For the Dr. Stone recipe, the honey is boiled down and caramelized over a fire. 
and the lime juice and cilantro leaves are added. Now to combine the two syrups with my slightly carbonated water. The end color was a bit revealing, so we conducted a blind taste test with some other colas, Coke, Pepsi, and a generic copycat to see how it all stacks up. We don't know what this one is. Pink. All right. Okay, that's really sweet. Very cinnamony. Good though. I would drink this. I feel like this might be one of ours. It's kind of orangey. It's a little, it's kind of Christmassy. I feel like some of the Cokes might taste like this. If somebody told me this was Coke and gave it to me, I would drink it and I would say yes. Thank you for the Coke, sir. Hmm. This is a store-bought Coke. It's a little flat tasting, like somebody opened it like a year ago. So I'm guessing it's gonna be Stars and Stripes dollar <laughs> store. <laughs> I think probably dollar store. It kind of tastes like a lazy Coke. Like, yeah. Like a Coke that's kind of tired. So I would say I, I like the first one better. Like yeah. it, it has stronger flavor, maybe. <laughs> this doesn't have a lot of flavor. I think this might be Stone Cola. I think it might be Pepsi. Really? The LaCroix of Pepsi. This tastes like Coke to me. Yep. Mm. Tastes kind of off to me. A little sus though. Whoa. I don't know what to believe. <laughs> <laughs> this is a lot harder than I thought it would be. This is the Dr. Stone one. <laughs> it's like really syrupy. It has a very strong caramel flavor. Not sure about this one. Really thick. I like it. The caramel flavor is a bit overwhelming. I think it's kind of overpowering. It doesn't really remind me of Coke too much. Yeah, kind of tastes like a breakfast soda, like syrupy. I hate the Dr. Strong. I don't hate it, I just don't like it. Well, the natural one turned out pretty good. Mm -hmm. The cinnamon really kind of helps seal the deal, I think. If anything, this is a this is a tell for dollar store Coke. I know, <laughs> I, 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 it tastes a lot better than regular Coke. Stars and Stripes, baby. <laughs> <laughs> So if you include all the travel to Mexico for the cinnamon, the growing of the things, it was about $500 for the soda. But uh, in the end times, when you're desperate and you're craving a Coke, it's better than nothing. <sighs> Thanks everybody for watching. Thank you to all of our supporters on Patreon. Consider supporting us so we can keep making more. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.